Africa. It is the world's kidney that the world needed today in order for it to survive. Just like your brain or heart, kidneys keep you alive. Africa, it is that kidney that the world have to have in order for it to survive, otherwise it will die. The kidneys have many vital jobs, says President William Ruto from Kenya. We actually are a powerhouse because we have 60% of the world's renewable energy. We have 40% of the world's minerals necessary for energy transition. We have the largest tracts of land for smart agriculture. And we have the largest natural carbon sinks or nature sinks. So we are indeed the new kid in the block, the powerhouse around renewable energy. The journey of a thousand kilometers starts with one step. You have said yourself that they weren't even willing to have this conversation a year ago. Today they are putting money. It means tomorrow their whole story will have changed because they realize that we are unrelenting. They realize that we are not going to shut up. And they realize that this is not something that they can run away from. They are squarely responsible. We must do this together. And it's just a matter of time for all of us to realize that there is no north, there is no south, there is no east, there is no west. We are all in it together. And therefore, everybody must bring their resources onto the table. We are all agreed today that there is need to look at alternative sources of revenue. That carbon pricing, carbon tax is now a farm option on the table. And we will be launching a, a plan with the UAE, France and other coalition partners on a new charter for climate financing. How do the billions that oil companies are making, how do they seed 5-10% of their profits to sort out the climate menace we have? How do we um, uh, tax uh, marine transport? How do we uh, tax um, air transport? How do we uh, have targeted financial uh, transaction tax so that we can raise additional revenue in billions that will be raised by everybody so that it's not about the donors, it's not about the people who are contributing, it's about all of us, because this is an existential problem. Through an interview, the man he had to tell the world once again that if you don't take care of your kidney, if you don't look after your kidney, if you don't give what your kidney need in order for it to be more healthier, then you must know that you are killing yourself slow by slow. And he was giving this example on Africa because Africa has each and everything that this planet or this world need to have in order for it to survive with their economy, with their climate change, with everything that this world needs, it all found inside Africa and it all belongs to Africans. So therefore, the world need to treat Africa good. Why should the African have to pay for something that they did not consume? Why should African natural resources have to be used for free by those who want to use it without paying anything in exchange? Why do Africa continent have to continue to be victim of something that they did not even invent? Well, these are the capital questions that each and every Pan-African they are asking themselves today. In order for Africans to have a proper answer to all these questions, they need to have true leaders, they need to have true Pan-Africans who can come forward and address these matters to the world, who can have that courage to face the world leaders and tell them the truth right in front of their eyes. Because the African continent can't continue to be the same of this world to when it comes to the climate change when they are not the one who have all these industrials that we get to see around the world because Africa did not damage this world. Africans they are not the one who make this planet to be having a different climate change each and every time that can affect the humanity. The worst countries with their companies that the one who make this planet to be having a climate change each and every time because of the things that they've been using. Things that if they don't solve this problem today, then it will affect the entire world. Now, 
since they are counting on Africa countries in order for them to come to the rescue of this climate change. Well, President Ruto of Kenya, he had to remind them that there's nothing that's going to be for free because Africans, they had nothing to do with this. If you guys want to have anything from Africa from now on, then we need to negotiate and we need to have a proper negotiation. President Ruto was being interviewed in this COP28 UAE, which is taking place right now. And as you all know that there is many world leaders who are gathered over there. But in behalf of Africa, President Ruth of Kenya had given serious answers to the questions which was asked through this interview. Before we get to discuss even more further, I'm inviting you first to have a listen to what President Ruto had said in this interview about what the world is doing to Africans. You have talked about the fossil fuel industry there and the maritime industry there. These are huge emitting industries. Are they sold on the project? At least they are sitting on the table and we are having the conversation. That's how it starts. Mm. That's how it started with the multilateral development banks. That's how it started with the loss and damage. So people will resist for a while until they see the point. The fact that UAE, a major emitter, is actually hosting COP and we are having a conversation about renewable energy and they are investing in renewable energy is a step in the right direction. Let me tell you that um, the whole space around carbon pricing, carbon credit, carbon market is a new field. What we insisted in the um, Nairobi Declaration of African leaders is that we must have integrity around that space. We must have integrity about around uh, carbon, carbon pricing. We must have integrity about uh, carbon markets and about, about carbon trading. And that is the reason why we are changing regulations. We are changing policy. We are providing incentives for investment in this new field. And what we are saying, and why I'm confident, is that slowly the World Bank has taken up this challenge. And now we're going to have a uniform carbon price for carbon trading. Once we have integrity around carbon pricing and carbon markets and carbon trading, we will use the price of carbon to, to raise resources for our own development and for funding uh, development needs of countries that have these huge resources, among them Kenya and other African countries. Until you have the resources, and that is what we are working on, until you have adequate resources to invest in renewable energy, naturally, if you have the resources at the moment to invest in transition, you know, the, tra the transition energies that are there, whether they are fossil fuel or gas or I mean, it makes business sense. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. For Kenya, our target is to have all renewable energy slow down mm. our, any investment in uh, fossil fuels mm. in Kenya. We do not have any fossil fuel um, re, uh, resources at the moment in Kenya. All we have is the normal fuel we import from everywhere else, but we are now starting a huge e-mobility program yeah. to make sure that uh, we change all our transport into uh, uh, one that re uses renewable uh, energy. Uh, e-mobility is the new trajectory for Kenya and it is my commitment that uh, by 2030 Kenya will be 100% green. So, now that you have managed to watch this interview, this short interview of President of Kenya, President Ruto, tell me something. Is this man right on what he just said or yes or no? Because sometimes we need to take this matter very serious. We are talking about Africa natural resources and Africa minerals which are being used out there in the world. And yet people of Africa, they are being treated as a cabbage and no one is taking African serious. No one is considering Africa. No one is not even making sure that where these Africans are coming for, what can we do in order for them also to find and enjoy their natural resources that we've been stealing or using from them. 
because if we don't talk about these guys i believe these people don't keep on taking advantage so now that we're having kind of pan africans african leaders who are having that one courage to go out there in this kind of big summit out there and raise up their voice and speak in behalf of the whole entire africa continent all we have to do as true Pan-Africans, all we have to do as Africans, we don't have to keep quiet about this. Instead, we need to make even more noise so that what these leaders are saying out there to the Western powers and all these people who are busy damaging the world with their... Uh, companies that they are busy inventing different things, chemistries that they've been using, we need at least to ring out the bell and tell them that no, we know exactly what you guys are doing and we are supporting what our leaders are talking in our behalf. President Ruth, what he said, it is something that it has been said before, long time ago. No one never take us serious. Instead, what they keep on doing, they trying to make sure that they must be have a last word to talk when it comes to African affairs. So they go, they damage the planets, and then they'll come in Africa and they just come and impose us, I mean, they impose their leadership on us, telling us what to, to do with our own mineral and natural resource. In our previous video, I talked to you and told you on how these people have the courage to come in South Africa, asking the South Africa government to not use their coal. The fact that South Africa can't use their own coal, which means it will affect South Africa electricity. And in the meantime, you guys, you know that Europe is using South Africa coal. And they are using it, they are busy damaging the planet, but yet the owner of this coal, they don't want it, they don't want them to use it. Was it all South Africa? No. We are having many countries in Africa, and one of it is the DR Congo, where they are having a big forest after Amazon in the world. We are having DR Congo with the equatorial forest, if I'm not mistaken. And this um a forest is the what is, is what is helping to bring even more fresh air oxygen that can help people around the world at least to breathe because the world is being destroyed already the world is rotten already with all these uh, chemicals that they, 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 are, they are using through their companies the petrol killing the fish in the sea or maybe uh, this, the, the, the fish that get to survive in the sea, the, once you go and eat them, you as a human, you eat them, the next thing is to start getting sick, some anonymous sickness that you can't even be able to uh, get healed if you have to go to the hospital. So all these things of climate change, they end up realizing that the solution to all this, it found in Africa continent. Because Africa they did not have enough companies. They did not use a lot of uh, chemicals that destroy this planet. So since us we already damaged this planet, we need now to go and back Africa so that they should look after their natural resource. They should look after their seas. They should look after their forest. They should look after their minerals so that it will help us to survive, otherwise we'll start dying, otherwise animals will start dying everywhere. And they do all this. There's nothing bad about that. As I always say, Africa was so good, we are willing to help when we can help. But what is African benefiting in return after all this? Because that is something that we need to consider as well. When you guys are having, you want to find a solution to this climate change. And here comes now Africa that you want to use their natural resource and everything. What do you do in return so that the owner of this, they can also benefit? As I said earlier on in the beginning of this video that Africans, they are making them pay for something that they did not invade. Africans, they are being asked to assume some responsibility of something that they did not even, for a crime that they did not commit, if I have to put it in that way. So, at least, 
We need to sit down and have a conversation to understand that. If you guys will need the help from Africa continent, what is African have to benefit from all this? Because they are not the one who had invaded all these things. They are not the one who consume all these things. They are not the one who've been collecting the tax from all these companies in order for them to fabricate whatsoever. They were busy invading so that it will go and destroy the world. So that it will, it will go and change the climate climb in the world to the point that it will start affecting uh, people's life. Africans, they are just victims out there. But now that you want to use their natural resource, then we need to negotiate. So what is Africans have to benefit from all this? Is Africans have just to be, uh, to be there and obey to what you guys are telling them to do? Those are the capital questions we need to ask. Because imagine they went in Congo. They are telling Congolese that you don't have to cut the tree. They are telling those villages who are there in that bush, telling them that no, you don't have to cut the tree. And when they are, when they are saying all this, these people they are living in an undeveloped country. So you are not even helping them with some foundings which will help them to develop their countries. If it happened that they usually cut this tree to go and sell it so that they will survive. And when you stop them from not cutting these trees, then you need to make sure that they must have the food on their table. You must provide something for them. You must give them the money so that they'll get busy on something else in other uh, occupations. You understand? Instead of them going in the bush and cutting this tree and coming out to sell it so that they'll make a living. Now, with all this, ask yourself this question. Have these people done it before? No, they have not done it. Here in South Africa, we're having a problem of load shedding. When we're having the natural mineral resource that can help South Africa to light each and every house 24 hours by 24 hours. Are them even trying at least to discuss these matters in this summit, in this uh, COP28, whereby they'll just think that, okay, no, look, if we ask these people to not sell their coal, then what about if we help them solve their problems, which is the electricity with something else, maybe with a, a different strategy that you can use in order for people to have electricity, so that at least no one who's going to, they will need to bend this world or maybe do things that will make this, uh, this situation of climate change get even more worse. They are not doing that. They are leaving the government of South Africa. We are dealing with these things on our own and no one is helping us. But yet, they want you not to do what you're supposed to be doing with your own natural min uh, mineral resource. That is something that we need to stand against. And that is what President Ruth of Kenya was trying to explain to them that no. We need to sit down and have a conversation. We need to look for an example like oil companies. Oil companies, they are paying a lot of tax. They are one of those things that pays a lot of tax like because there is a lot of money there. This money, where does it go? Who use this money? Obviously, they will tell that no, it's the government of those countries. Okay, fine. When those countries they are busy collecting those money, those tax monies, which come from the oil companies, why do they not think to help countries such as Brazil? Because Brazil, they are contributing in a very big uh, percentage part of like to help this problem being solved. Why they are not helping Africa countries? Since they realize that no, Africa is actually that kidney that the world needed today in order for the world to survive. Why they are not sponsoring, helping Africans to develop in other ways so that we, we will at least get distracted on when it comes to our natural resource and focus on something else on how to develop our countries so that this natural resource will help them as they want it to help them. So, there have to be something that these people have to do in exchange so that at least we can both be in the same page. We will not going to sit here and keep quiet when these people go out in the world, do whatever they want to do, 
affecting the world uh, uh, economies, affecting the world climate change. And at the end of the day, they have to come and tell that, no, look, we know this is your house, but you can't eat at this time. You can't drink water in your house. Would you allow that? I don't think so, dear Africans. I don't think so. Definitely, I don't think so, because you will end up feeling like, no, someone is taking you as a slave in your own house. So we need to stand up Africans. We need to encourage this kind of a speech from President Ruto and many more other African leaders like President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa who also give them hard time. When it comes to the more developed economies, living up to their commitments with regard to what they promised in Paris. We still want the hundred billion dollars that they promise to be paid up so that we countries that are least responsible for climate damage should be able to have the funding to deal with climate change. Yes. The man was very serious. He told them that, no, look, we need to negotiate with Africans. We don't just need to come in and pretend like, no, these things does not belong to someone and start using it. No, we need to have a proper way to negotiate with Africans so that they can understand. But we can also go far because these people, whenever they want to commit a crime, in the world or maybe they want to invade a country or maybe they want to attack another nations what they usually do they'll make sure that they'll be founding the countries that want to cooperate with them the countries that want to work with them we saw it in many places in the world including ukraine with zelensky now in israel uh, with the, the premier minister of israel so you see that they will put all the money, they will put a lot of effort, billions and billions of money for them to motivate another nation so that they will go and kill innocent people everywhere, whether they are being found inside the hospital or maybe a church, they just go there and they kill them. So if these people, they can have this kind of money, this kind of billions of money for them to go and founding the world uh, to be in the conflict of war, what about Africa that is being considered as their kidney that help this planet to survive? Dude, you know when you're having a problem with your kidney, a doctor will tell you straight away that, no, look, we need to solve this problem right now because your kidney play a major role in your life. If you are, your kidney start having problem, then you must know that um, your days are numbered. Anything can, ha can happen. You can have a kidney failure. You can have a kidney what, 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 what. Or you'll be having a liver problems, your heart problems. You'll be suffering until you lose your life. A kidney. And we all know that even buying a human kidney, it's very expensive because it's not something that you can just go out, uh, you can sleep and wake up or go out there and find someone giving it to you for free. Now, imagine Africa is being considered in this uh, COP28 as the world's kidney. A world's kidney. Then they have to look after it, isn't it? They have to look after it. So my point in all this, I'm trying to make you understand that we need to stand against this. We need to make sure that if they want to use our natural resource, if they want to use our minerals, then... They need to come and negotiate with us. They need to come and help Africa to develop. And we don't need, when, don't get me wrong, when I'm saying that they have to come and help Africa to develop, I'm not saying that they should come back and live in Africa as they did back then. No, we don't want that. We don't want to be, be controlled by anyone or be under the leadership of a certain people sitting somewhere in, at overseas. No. Actually, what I'm trying to say is that as much they have the money to go and found the war around everywhere in the world, then they need to do the same thing with Africa continent. They must come and give us money. Yes. If you say that, no, look, 
Africa, you guys, you are having one, two, three, four. We don't want you guys to touch this part. You don't want you guys to maybe produce a lot of petrol at this kind of oceans or any river around so that it will not affect the fish and the and other animals which are found inside the water or maybe it's not going to affect the water that people will drink or maybe it's not going to affect the soil so that it will have that uh, uh, that good manure well we don't have a problem we can negotiate on that but with something in return you must come and pay for that you must come and make sure that no you give billions why not even trillions of money to africans so that we can try to create jobs in around africa we can try to come up with some ideas on how to develop africa and we're not gonna touch all those things as you are asking us but these things of you doing whatsoever you want to do you know they damaging the planet with the kind of the smoke which have different acid inside it with kind of uh, uh, bombs that they, they get to throw somewhere where the people are supposed to be planting food to eat and the next things the food is being now um, um, affected and it start affecting also our health well in that case we need at least to have a proper conversations they need to respect africa because africa will represent something bigger that, that that them they need in the world yes we might all need but trust me <laughs> if you look according to the world reports about this climate change africa so far we are not affected mm -hmm. we are not affected if you are affected maybe some places like uh, uh, in the south of sudan you know, because there is more uh, desert and at the site of uh, Sahara, those areas a little bit because obviously those areas there's no water, there's you know, there's like nothing, nothing. So things are becoming a little bit tight for them. But in majority, I can say maybe 99 percent or 98, if you want me to go to a little bit low, of percent, 98 of percent of African countries we are good, but. On other side of the world, <laughs> that the one who are going through all this, they already start seeing the signs. They can see already that these things it can really destroy us quick. So we don't want, we don't have problem as Africans to negotiate, to to talk about this. We don't have a problem to support the world because we are all human after all. Because we don't have any problem with anyone, we can help if we can. But we just want also something in exchange. There must not be something for free. There must not be anyone or any government out there who have to come and impose their leadership on Africans and telling them that, oh, don't cut the trees in your, your forest. Um, don't do this in your with your minerals. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, that's what we don't want. So that's something that we are going to stand on it and we are going to make sure that we hit the hand on the table until they hear us. As you had President Ruto, uh, President William Ruto, confirming it again saying that no now at least they are considering what we've been asking them all this time they are considering that we can go through like uh, oil companies we can go through um people who are benefiting people are actually these companies which are busy making billions of money in the meantime, they are busy destroying the world and they are paying this tax money to their government and the government is not doing nothing. So whether it is their government, whether it is these companies, they need now to start seeing on how they can start founding African countries, which they found that can help or contribute to this climate change so that everyone they can be in good health. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It was very important that we come along together as African people to get to understand what was the message behind this beautiful interview of a president William Ruto from Kenya and these are the kind of the speech or interview that we need to support as Africans if we truly love this uh, continent and if we really want to see it developing it uh, developing in a very good way so that's the reason why I was like okay no we need to talk about this so that at least we get to give us our point our, uh, our point of view through our our analysis so if you ever find anything beneficial in this video, please, before you leave, I'm begging you, do me a favor. Make sure that you hit that like button. 
okay like this video give me a thumbs up i'll really do appreciate so that this message can reach even to more many people out there but if this is your first time to watch our videos well first of all i just want to thank you for taking your time to watch this video because we really do appreciate your presence here and we are welcoming you if you feel like you want to be hearing more often from us whenever we are live here or whenever we upload a new video well well, if all you have to do is to make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that whenever we are here you get a notification and you'll come and join this beautiful family but for those who always watch me time to time guys uh, allow me also to take this opportunity just to say thank you so much because you guys you are so wonderful thank you so much for your support thank you so much for your unconditional love I saw you guys through the your comment sessions, you know, like the way you guys you comment and give your point of view. I saw you guys the way you are supporting us with our channel members. We really do appreciate everything. Trust me, don't think that we take you for granted, but we really do appreciate for everything you are doing to make sure that we are here because we are also here for you. We are here to share our message, to encourage Africans, to pass the message to the world in behalf of Africans. Because, guys, the kind of conversation we usually have in this channel, it is a kind of a conversation that you can't find it out there, especially when it comes to the Western medias. They'll distract you, they'll tell you something else, they'll tell you actually what you don't want to hear because that is what them they want you to hear. So they will always come and try to distract you, showing you what Vladimir Putin have done in Ukraine or what they have done this and that. But the truth that you deserve to know as African child, they don't want you to know that. So everywhere you are as a black child, you need to come in here and support people like us because we are taking that risk to at least reveal the truth that you deserve to know and so that we can all be um, in the same page and be able to speak one language as one uh, Africa continent. So we really do appreciate you for everything and i hope this message have reached to you if you are busy subscribing or hitting the like button we really do appreciate that guys that will be all for today thank you so much for everything for now continue to be yourself be good be kind to everyone because life is too short run out of trouble of your country because we still need you here we want to see you each and every time we're here May God bless you all. I'll see you again very soon. Ciao, ciao.